Hi, my name is Gerdy Verwoerd and you're listening to Daring Self Leadership and the Nature Connection. I first came across today's guest on LinkedIn when we both responded to a post that spoke to us. I think he even may have liked a comment of mine. Always curious to know who is interacting in some way with the the same content I am, I checked out his profile and I was immediately intrigued. On it, he describes himself as the founder and pioneer of walking mentorship, combining walking in nature with individual and group mentoring. And if that wasn't enough, he goes on to say that walking mentorship is a tool to inspire and motivate individual change and impact organizations from within. My guest considers himself to be a citizen of the world. He was born in Portugal, finished high school in the United States and then completed his MBA in Belgium. His first senior management appointment took him to Central Asia, Kazakhstan, followed by assignments in Ukraine and Eastern Europe, and finally Angola and Mozambique in Africa. Throughout his personal and professional life, he has acquired extensive experience as business mentor in multinationals, accelerators, incubators, and corporate programs. In 2014, he launched the Walking Mentorship, an innovative project 20 years in the making. It consists of a philosophy of self-development with a methodology based on different mentoring formats, connecting walking and direct contact with nature. He's an advisory board member in different organizations. He's a guest lecturer at the EADA Business School in Barcelona, at the Elviv Business School in Ukraine and at the Catolica Porto Business School in Portugal. And he's also a member of the International Network of Mentoring Researchers, a member of the EMCC, and an associate mentor of the International Mentor Network. Bringing 15 plus years of mentoring experience at the international level, my guest has a strong focus on change management, business transformation, and personal development. Focusing on walking mentorship, together with his business partner and fellow mentor, Nuno Santes Fernandez, My guest offers a guided self-development, body and mindfulness experience with customized mentoring formats outdoor and online. They connect mentoring and walking in direct contact with nature, letting one's self-awareness become the most impactful, eye and heart opening facilitator for personal breakthroughs, attention shifts and purpose alignment. As they put it, it is indeed a program for skeptics. An experience that cannot be sold, only achieved. Together, they also host the podcast, Keep Walking With Me. My guest now lives among the vineyards of Portugal, where, during COVID, he has taken his mentees on virtual mentored walks. Speaking with them on the phone while they are both walking in whatever nature that can be found where they live. In an earlier conversation, he told me that he's been doing that so much now that the people he runs into no longer look up, wondering why he's walking around with obvious headphones while out and about. So let's dive into my conversation with João Perviana. João Perviana, thank you for being on this uh, this podcast. I really appreciate it. And for if you hear some kind of chuckle in my voice, that's because I forgot to press record and we were 15 minutes in. So <laughs> <laughs> we have to start again. I'm going to start again with the question that I asked first, which was, you write on your profile that um, walking mentorship was a dream 20 years in the making. And um, that made me curious. How come it was 20 years in the making? Uh, that's uh, it's a, it's a great question. Uh, to be very honest, I thought for the first time about um either producing uh creating honestly i had no words um i was much younger than today uh it was the summer of 1993 and i end up doing a really long walk absolutely mistaken to be very honest because i follow my friends and they told me that was a great thing to do um to be honest i i thought that was a great opportunity to meet interesting people mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh uh, it, it turned out to be a totally different experience and a, a lot more than what I thought. And then in the end of this very long walk, which took, I don't know, five, six weeks, wow. um, I understood that uh, 
what a what a, a great thing to do to change your life because I really understood that something was changing inside. Mm-hmm. I was not sure exactly what. And um, ever since that day, I always thought that uh, it was possible to do something. I just didn't know how. So I continued to explore. Um, I also have to say that every time this idea came to my mind, I always tried to kill it. And I failed epically because um, uh, all my attempts to delete from my brain this crazy idea, uh, it, it never succeeded. So it continued to build up. Mm. And even knowing that uh, I, I end up having, a, I would say, a very interesting professional journey that took me uh, to different places and cultures. Actually, I think my work was probably the best travel agency of my life. Mm. But um, it, there was always something in the back of my mind. So in every country or region I was working and living, uh, I was always, uh, you know, carrying a backpack with me and, and some, some hiking boots. And that, that was always the way I find out the best to discover what was around me, walking yeah. and especially in contact with nature and, and other people. So these three elements, they were always uh, together. And after 20 years, uh, I think that there was a, a couple of, um, events in my life that brought together, you know, nature walking and mentoring and, uh, a little bit like, um, I think like, uh, magic, but a little bit masochist as well, because <laughs> this is the type of project that, uh, if, if, if you know everything from the beginning where you are about to go through, most mm. likely you think twice <laughs> if you yeah. really want to do it, because mm. there's so much that is being asked, um, for yourself, but on the other side, the alternative is um, it's not so interesting because, you know, if you, if you never try, you will never discover probably what are the, the real reason for you to be uh, in, this, in this world and to be alive. So I can only be grateful that life has gave me the, the challenges in the right measure for mm. me to be able to complete them, learn from them most of the times with my uh, mistakes and, and, and failures that yeah. turn out actually to be the biggest accomplishments because when you, you understand what doesn't work, actually you are on the right path to understand what, what does work. So Yeah, that's true. That's very true. So you said you tried to kill this dream. <laughs> yes, very <laughs> what much. Made you want to, oh, what made you want to kill this dream? Oh, it's the, the idea in the beginning was very romantic, but in a very practical approach. I mean, I, I've been for so many years, uh, you know, having um, management roles and especially yeah. doing restructurings and operations. I mean, you become a very objective, uh, rational person. So, you know, if, if you would put the project on an Excel spreadsheet, you will immediately understand uh, this is no way I, I want to do this. This is just... <laughs> Too much. It's not, it's not and, viable. Uh, so I had very good reasons mm. not to do it. Mm. But uh, every time I was progressing, uh, in the beginning, starting with uh, with you know testing with with pilot groups. I mean, obviously asking the three Fs to come along with you, your family, friends, and fools. And actually, some of them mm-hmm. joined. And uh, and the feedback I was receiving was uh, for me overwhelming because. I was listening people telling me things like, this is totally you. This is mm-hmm. your life. I mean, yeah. you were, it sounds like you were born to do this. Mm. And of course, you 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 get a bit shocked because that's, uh, to be honest, that's a bit frightening. I mean, because it, I felt a little bit too much compromised from the very beginning. I mean, wait a second. <laughs> what about me having a decision on this? <laughs> so the feedback was building up. And, and that really it took me in, in, a, in a moment in life where, I had to make a few decisions of start mm-hmm. doing less of what I was doing before yeah. so I could start doing more mm-hmm. of this. And uh, and to be honest, this was not like a eureka moment in my life. So I did not just quit my job. I didn't do anything like that. I mm. continued to do, you know, some of the, 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 the work I was doing, but I started doing less and less. And actually it was more of a phase in, phase out yeah. in my life over a period of maybe two years. And one day, actually, I look at my calendar and I understood, oops, I mean, that's it. I, I'm already there. Mm. And, um, and there was no turning back, to be very honest. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a kind of an organic process of you stepping into what could be called self-leadership. 
Well, indeed, you are absolutely right. Because in the beginning, I tried really hard to find this project already done. So I, I didn't have to do it. I mean, because, I mean, let's be honest, if the, the wheel is invented, don't try to do it. Mm. And um, I was so surprised. I will tell you, the first moment I felt this moment of surprise was after a few months of searching for names that somehow could encapsulate the idea. Yeah. And I come down to this obviously so simple name. I mean, walking, mentorship. It's, yeah, it's and brilliant. I was absolutely shocked because I could not find anything like that on Google. Mm. Yeah. And um, and I was even more surprised when I tried to register the, the name and thought, how is it possible? I mean, I'm sure that it's been thousands of people thinking about this in the last 200 years. Mm. And um, and obviously that when you find out that maybe this is kind of a, you know, a, a little opening through mm. the through the clouds showing yeah. you the, the blue sky and the sunshine and say, well, now you know, now you ask, now you need to move forward. And yeah. that's what I did. Yeah, you would have. It, it is true. It's it's um, brilliant in its simpleness, and it, you would have thought that it would have, would have been trademarked and registered. Absolutely. A long time ago. Well, that's that was great. And um, so now, you. I've I've looked at a couple of your videos. You have your video channel and links to all your uh, social media and your website will of course be in the in the show notes. Um, what I see there is a lot of people who look very happy, first of all, to be walking, but also um, when they come to the end of the program, um, they, it, the, the, they leave raving reviews you know, saying how much they appreciated the experience, but most of all, how much they appreciated the, the combination of mentoring and walking. Um, and I listened to your own podcast, one of your own podcasts the other day, and I really liked the question that you asked uh, of Jennifer Walsh that you were interviewing. You asked, uh, what do you think is um, the most important or the most effective, the walking, the talking or nature? And I'd love to know your own answer to that question. Well, that's a, I know it's an unfair question. That's the, the way I like to call them. Um you see, I I think every person will have uh, a different answer to it. And even myself, I think I will have a different answer depending on the moment of mm -hmm. my life, depending on the route, um, depending on the challenges I'm facing. Because I think that these are three doors that they are equally important. And, um, and the fact that they are together just gives you so much more opportunities and chances to do the work, the serious work in the best possible way. Because sometimes you look at the sunrise and that's enough for your life to change. That's yeah. the click. But some other times, it's definitely it's not nature. It might be, you know, after, you know, the, 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 the very challenging climb of a mountain. And mm -hmm. I mean, you, you are a mountaineer, you know what I'm talking. And sometimes... Just the fact that you get there and all the process to get there, that's the click. Yeah. But some other times, it's not nature. It's not the walking. It's maybe the talking. It's mm. listening to a story of another person. Maybe it is sharing your story and mm -hmm. thinking about your story at the same time. That's the click. So to, to be very honest, I don't think it is uh, one size fits all. Mm -hmm. I think it's more depending on the moment, depending on you, where you are in your life. And then you have this flexibility. And this is absolutely uh, beautiful because most of the times these things are very much in reach of every person in the globe. Mm -hmm. Most of the times they are free of charge. So you don't have to pay anything. You True. probably just need to be attentive and listening. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's my answer. I think that um, it, 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 it really depends on the day. Yeah. 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 A really good answer. And I agree. It, I tend to agree. It's the combination of the three. They make for a unique mix. Uh, at the same time, I also think that the fact that you're walking and talking in beautiful surroundings, 
does help. There is a there is something about walking with each other that makes it easier to slip into a very deep conversation yeah. than when we're doing Zoom, like we're doing right now, or although funnily enough, I find it easier to do it on Zoom than I do it when I'm sitting in an office or something. So there's this sort of a, a, a higher hierarchy there. It's for me and for, I think for a lot of people, it's, it's hardest when we're sitting between four walls somewhere. It gets a little bit easier when we're doing it on Zoom. And it gets a lot easier when we're doing it while we're walking. I cannot agree more. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, it's been a, already a while that I promise to myself that every single conversation that I can do um, while walking, mm. meeting, I will do it walking. And, yeah. um, and actually, uh, I, I think I'm the living proof that that's possible because I go through winter, summer, spring yeah. i just have the proper clothes and exactly. coverage i mean yeah. mobile coverage and um i there are days that i i get out three four times per day mm. um i mean i don't like to count the kilometers but it's quite remarkable when my very smartphone <laughs> tells me in the end of the day that you walk 15 20 kilometers just working yeah, and uh, that's uh, what I'm telling you, uh, telling you know people all the time. If you if you really have a conversation and you don't need to you know interact with the document or something, just go out. Yeah. Get your headphones. Get your phone. Go out. You are uh, you you know because what you're doing to your brain is mm. so incredible, profound that you can only benefit from it on the talk and meeting, but definitely for the rest of your life because. Uh, you, you were just mentioning this also how important it is these conversations that happen mm. when you actually are on the move mm. and this is the other x that i was telling the uh, just a few minutes ago i mentioned the, the vertical x but yep. this is the horizontal x mm. because uh, we are feeding each other basically with ideas yeah. uh, with thoughts with energy and actually science today has shown us how interesting this cycle works i mean your muscles they send basically literally they send messages up to your brain mm. then you have a process inside your brain and your brain feeds back to your muscles and then what you're doing as a person replicates with other persons on the group so yeah. all of this connection is absolutely there and then if you pick up you know the everything that is around you so mm. actually you, you can call it whatever you want, the environment, Mother Earth, yeah. Gaia, whatever. Mm. Everything is connected. And to be very honest, this is how we got here mm. after yeah. thousands of years. I mean, this is not real. Today, the difference is that today we can explain a lot better with science what's happening. But this is the yeah. same story since the very beginning of times. True, true. And we can... Though we can explain a lot of what's happening, we still can't explain everything. Oh, oh we are in the infancy, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, telling by the you know the best neuro uh, scientists in the world, we know very very little, but we are trying to learn more. Exactly, exactly. And I like what you said that um, it, we're all connected, and there's this thing that happens. I think it's on an energetic level almost. We are uh, that we're, we're that we're connecting we get into a flow state with each other or that we can help others, especially when the terrain is challenging or when somebody experiences something that's almost like a physical challenge, you know, we can help each other and we can help each other stay in flow or get in flow. And when we have that connection, I've guided a lot of people through the mountains and especially on the longer hikes, it's by day two, something has happened to this group and you've, you, you become this unit. Yes. And like I said, the conversations, they deepen very quickly. It's very rare that on, on tracks that last longer than a day that you just talk about the weather, for example. <laughs> and it, it's very limited, the weather and the food and the, and the hotels yeah. you <laughs> stay. Um, I mean, you can resist for some time, but mm -hmm. um, there is a point that um, basically you, you fuse yourself yeah. with the group, with the environment, yes. uh, with yourself. So this idea, this 
concept of one actually becomes so clear, uh, so clear. I mean, it's it's something uh, absolutely special. Yeah. And um, and, uh, and and we have these amplifiers that at least that's the way I, I refer. You know that surround you because when you when you are in environments that uh, um, make your awareness to be so much more present, mm -hmm. but the frequency around you it's an amplifier, meaning that you become amplified yourself. I yeah. mean, there is not much you can do to avoid that, and it can be you know a pouring rain down your head, yeah, and basically you become rain yeah. and can be at top of a glacier and you become the glacier. Yeah. And yeah. or just the blue sky. I guess it's um um I, I know it sounds a, a, a bit poetic, but I think that actually it's not. Actually, I, I found it very tangible. It just needs for you to be there because yeah. I think that when a person does not relate with these stories, I I I understand that I need to be very uh patient from one side mm -hmm. and actually totally um, understand because if you never experience this in life, yeah. it's obvious that it will even sound funny. But if you did, I can assure that the person is listening and literally starts, you know, time traveling to somewhere, someplace. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. And I think a big part of that experience is um, feeling really connected to your surroundings. I like to call it Mother Earth and, and other people just say the planet or whatever, but it's you're doing something that you're meant that we were designed for. We were designed to walk. Yes. And um, a lot of modern society has forget forgotten that. But when you start doing it, you the endorphins start flowing. And once you've done it one day, you're like, well, maybe the second day you're like, well, eh. but by the third day you get into this rhythm. And it's I love that. I absolutely adore that when that happens. It's so wonderful to just be walking and to sometimes I sort of hang above myself. I feel like a helicopter wondering what it is that this person is doing and why it is. It's so easy for my feet to find, to find the places where they have to land. Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, this is, uh, you, you know, all, all these experiences, I think they, they, they are so deep. And what truly happens inside each person, um, it's so unique and so profound that uh, quite often I feel, well, first of all, I feel the gratitude to be there mm, somehow. Yeah. But even if I can only grasp maybe <clears throat> maybe 1% of what's happening, sometimes maybe less than 1%, mm. that's more than enough. Yeah. Because you really see life in in this uh, probably purest form unfolding, and um, you you know that everybody somehow feels touched by a newborn. I mean, mm. it's it's something quite, I would say, um, regular in our lives. I mean, we heard about a newborn and we feel so touched. Yeah. And what I notice is that I've seen many adults become newborns. Mm. In you know, in the top of a mountain, or yeah. or in the end of a of a journey. So obviously, this really touches you, and and in the end, changes yeah. your life as well. Yeah, it does. It does. So now I know you you do one on one coaching, but you the the walking mentorship. You also organize group experiences, and. The one-on-one -on -one can be really powerful. There is something very special about doing it in a group, I, I suspect. It's it's a very good question. I, I'm not 100% sure if I'm the best person to answer because the way I see it is that um, when, when we start doing the programs, and I, I mean, today I have more people uh, mm. mentoring and co-mentoring with me, the idea was always to you know, create the conditions to have more flexibility for, for your life. Mm -hmm. And uh, even knowing that in the beginning, maybe I was a little bit more fundamentalist about the idea that this should be an immersive experience. And, 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 and in the beginning, maybe the first two, three years, mm. I was not doing one-to-one -one mentoring. Mm. I was only doing 
immersive, a full week program. Mm -hmm. But then I start listening again. I mean, I think that that's something that it's very challenging, listening to different types of lives. And I understood that some people would never, ever go on immersive week, never. Mm -hmm. And I had to accept, look, if you really want to touch other people's life and or maybe create the conditions that they can do this type of work and experience, then you need to come up with different solutions. Mm. So that's why the one-to-one -one mentoring appeared and happens face-to-face uh, uh, -face or virtually. Actually, that's one of the interesting things in a, in a kind of a, a pandemic life we have yeah. today. I mean, in the last four or five years, I mean, I was always doing the one-to-one the, the, the -one mentoring uh, virtually. So mm -hmm. uh, me in one country, the other person in another country, yeah. walking in nature, using our mobile phones. Yeah. And the group programs, actually, they evolved over the years because um, the first four or five years, we only did uh, group programs for individuals. So people will join as an individual coming from somewhere, mm -hmm. whatever, in the planet. And then... It was mainly driven by the alumni that went back to their homes or their countries. And some of these people were running or managing their own companies. They started asking, can you do this program for my team, for my company? Mm -hmm. And about two years ago, we actually started doing um, walking mentorship programs uh, for corporations, mm -hmm. uh, which in the beginning, and maybe because I had uh, 20 years behind me of corporate world, I really didn't want to touch it or jump it too fast. Oh, yeah, I recognize it's that. It's very specific. And um, the rules are slightly different because an individual that wants to change his uh, own life, I mean, it's it's pretty clear. I want to make changes. I'm, I want to do it. Yeah. But on a company, it's different because you have so many different wills. But I have to tell you, it's very humbling because I, I had doubts in the beginning. Me and my partner, we had doubts that we could probably – do it as well as we could do uh, in individual programs. Mm -hmm. But the results, the feedback, it's very humbling for us because we should not minimize the, the incredible impact of giving something good and positive mm. uh, in such a, a corporate environment. So um, actually this year, it turned out a little bit the other way around because mm. probably 80% of our programs today are corporate programs and only 20% are individual programs. Mm. Yeah. Well, that is an interesting shift in balance. And yes. I recognize the uh, the reluctance that of touching uh, corporate life again, because I, I spent 20 years in corporate life, not as international as you did, but um, I very deliberately left it because I was like, how I want to live cannot be combined with what was expected of me in corporate life. So when people tell, ask me, Gerdy, uh, what do you think about you know, team training, team building for companies? I used to have an almost, almost visceral reaction to that. No, I don't want to. <laughs> but that's such a great point. Um, um, let me tell you that I think that the reason why uh, we couldn't touch corporate programs uh, was because we were not ready for it. Mm. And the moment that we felt that we were ready, mm. we also understood that the eye of the hurricane, it's inside corporations. Mm. I mean, these are the, the micro or macro universes where hundreds or thousands of people spend the majority of their life. So the biggest changes we can aspire to influx into the world, they mm. are inside actually corporate world. Yeah. And, and the moment that we start and we start doing the programs and we start listening the feedback and little by little, because we understood that some of the things that we were doing, we could just not replicate it in corporate world. And that was absolutely true. Mm. We had to rethink the formats, the duration, mm. the intensity. I mean, it's really, really different in terms of format, in terms of content, actually we adapted because our methodology is one. So we, we don't really recreate uh, too many different ones. Actually, mm -hmm. we do have a couple of specific programs with specific methodologies, but these are more like, I would say, side projects with a, with a nice flavor. But our core program, it's exactly the same one. Yeah. But we also understand that when we receive a briefing from a company, they are very worried about 
what's going to happen to the team. Mm. Uh, I, I have to tell you that I never forget a one participant as an individual. Maybe four or five years ago, uh, he, he came on the program. I think he was from Wales. And he told me in the end, I love the program, but I would never allow my team to go on this program. And I was very curious. I mean, what happened? I mean, if you love it, and he said, no, because look, I know that if my team comes here, probably half of them will quit the job after the program because you will put them, you know, putting things in perspective. And I laugh, I register, and I even make a joke and say, well, then you should pay us a little bit more because we are doing the work that your human resources department is not able to do. But on the <laughs> other side, I can tell you that um, in every program that we do, especially programs that involved already 40, 50 mm. people, and we need yeah. to do like different cohorts because we have a ratio mentor mentee that we don't like to overcome because mm -hmm. otherwise it becomes just a yeah, team much. building and that's not what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a different thing, but we understood that um, in every program, some people question deeply, deeply the relation they have in their current moment in life. And if they don't do it, that's because the program is not doing the, the, the supposed effect. And then in the end, you can see that there's a lot of people that return back to work Mm. And they re-energize the relationship. They fine-tune a few things that are not working well. And they become, you know, the, the best version of themselves at work. And some people, I would say, uh, few, but some people question so much. And then it becomes clear, I shouldn't be here. This is not for me. Mm. And actually, the fact that they depart, they leave, it's good for everyone. I was going to say. Good for everyone. Exactly. It sounds like what you're doing with your program together with your partner um, is helping people reconnect and step into their own leadership. And that can mean I have to tweak some things. I, I'll start doing some things a little bit differently and that is good for me. And because it's good for me, it's also good for the company and the people I work with and work for. And for the rest of my life, for the, everything else that's going on in my life and some people come to the conclusion hang on what how i want to go through life is not in alignment with how the company i work for or the people i work with absolutely so i have to but leave you just gave the best definition because in one program one cor one corporate program a participant said in the end uh, writing a testimonial it feels to me that I'm back in the driving seat of my life. Exactly. And, and when you are in your driving seat, you can decide to turn left or right. And imagine left is staying within the company, right? I'm going to go for something else. Mm. But still, you are in the driving seat. And the company, if truly respects and care for people, should understand that this decision actually is good for everyone. Absolutely. It's good for everyone. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more because there's way too many companies who worry too much about people leaving and want to keep the people that don't want to that maybe don't want to stay. Yes. Exactly. And what happens is that you end up with a very unmotivated, maybe highly paid person. And uh, that uh, eventually absolutely. is always a disaster. Uh, Herdy, let me tell you that. Uh, about, I don't know, maybe three years ago, I was really surprised because we had the, um, the, uh, the HR director of a very big company coming to the program. He made me so many questions, to be honest, was beyond the program, it was not mm -hmm. even about the methodology. And there was a moment that I just wanted to ask him, look, why so many questions? And he said, you will understand one day. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I, I, I stop and that's it. Mm -hmm. One year later, I got a call from a person telling me, look, um, my human resources director gave me your phone number and he just literally forced me to put inside my farewell package. So actually this person was leaving the company and said, mm -hmm. he forced me to do the walking mentorship. I was thinking, what? Well, actually the human resources director was exactly this person mm. that was on a program one year earlier. And yeah. he basically said, look, you are leaving the company. You need to go through this program to help you, you know, find out your compass 
in your life. Yeah. And this person, this lady came on the program was, uh, was, I think was very interesting for her. Mm. And one year later, I mean, look at how things process. Yeah. She basically made me a call and saying, well, this is per, this is a person that is coming to the program. And actually we are doing an onboarding of a new <laughs> member. And I told the lady, well, within your package, in your welcome package, you need to go through the walking mentorship. So, you yeah. know, sometimes people ask me, what do I need this program for? And I say, well, if you want to come, if you want to leave, it sounds like it can help you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's so important to realize that you can be in the driver's seat of your life and, and everything that comes with it. And it's um, speaking for myself for a long time. I didn't even know that I didn't only when I realized that that's when I decided to go a different direction and leave corporate. But until then, you know, sort of life was sort of happening to me. And I think that happens to a lot of people. And that's, there's few benefits to the pandemic, but this I is agree. one of them. This is one of them, but because I really believe that a lot of people have also used this time, this past year to think about, okay, what is it that I've been doing? How have I been living my life? And do I want to return to air quotes that normal or do I want to now design my own normal? Yes, absolutely. It's, it's, it is actually, I think, like that. The feedback we receive is that there are very few positive things to take out of such a challenging year. I yep. mean, I believe that some people would like to think otherwise, but actually that's the reality. It's really hard for the majority of people, especially in countries where there are very strict uh, restrictions yes. and, and lockdowns because uh, I mean, d- just the other day I was reading something because sometimes, you know, you, 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 you see too much media and mm. you tend to believe that that's the reality, but then you, you always need to look a little bit on the fringe yes. and then you understand that actually the fringe is much bigger than the core. Uh, and, and so you actually are the fringe mm. the other way around. And the other day I was looking that in about 195 countries around the world, mm-hmm. only 97 countries impose restrictions during the past year. Mm. And out of these 97 countries, I think only 35 or 38 impose lockdowns. Only. Really? And out of these 38, I think 20 something are inside the European Union or the Western world. Mm. And when you zoom out, I mean, Mm. it's really interesting. When you zoom out, you think, wait a second. I mean, this has to make you think. Yeah. And again, I'm not making any judgment here because it sounds that uh, in this past year, the act of thinking seems to be very challenging because it's you can almost be labeled by something and not very good names just by thinking and questioning but yes it is at least what we need to do because you see we are talking about questioning our own lives so you need to do this step you know you you definitely uh, i think some people and at least that's what i uh, that's what i hear because we we never stop actually since August, September last mm. year, mm. the number of programs that we have been doing, uh, it, it, I mean, they increase every month, mm. especially the corporate programs, because we got phone calls or emails and people say, look, my team is about to burn out. Yes. I cannot afford this because otherwise our business stops. Mm. Can you help us? Well, mm. we say, well, let's go for a walk yeah. and then let's see what we can do. So we have, you know, basically every day of the week we have uh, dozens of people walking with us on the programs in mm-hmm. different locations because mm-hmm. that's a good thing about technology these days. Yeah. It really True. works. So we are walking in different countries, different regions, but then you see these people start questioning and then they come to a point which I think it's a beautiful moment when you understand that the big changes that you want in your life actually are not that big. Mm, exactly. Actually, you just mentioned a while ago, usually are small things that you need to tweak, that you need to change. Yes. Because you are always thinking it's going to be something big. No. Yeah. Usually it's few things and very small things. Yeah. And be consistent with them. Absolutely. Yeah. You have to. Just like walking. When you Im- yes. You have to <laughs> implement them and then stick to it because that's that's what makes it, what makes the change. But I completely agree. I want to be... Um, because I could be talking to you for a lot, very long time, I think. Um, but I want to be conscious of the time we spend together. So I'm going to ask you three questions. Sure. 
And it's, um, I found out it's similar to what you do with your guests on your podcast, at least the first one. What is a favorite piece of music of yours that celebrates nature? That's another unfair question. <laughs> There are so many. I know. Uh, well, if if I if I want to choose a music that somehow uh, makes me connect the different aspects that we mentioned before, mm -hmm. so not only nature but also mentoring and walking. Yeah. Um, there is a um, there is the piece called the Beatitudes. This is from uh, uh, I think Vladimir Martinov. So this is actually. It's kind of a peaceful piece. I, I believe it's somehow related with um, Russian Orthodox Church. I think there's some okay. influence there. Mm -hmm. But definitely to go really deep on my walks, um, I would suggest this, the Beatitudes. I think it can be challenging. I'm going to have to look, up, look that up because I'm not familiar with it. Hmm. Sounds interesting. A favorite book that celebrates nature? Oh, uh, again, I think it, it definitely celebrates uh, nature, but it is a book that opens so many doors. I actually, to, to be very honest, I think I read the book, I don't know, maybe 10 times. Really? And mm -hmm. I'm still maybe not even at 5% of understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this was so serious that I had to contact the author. And fortunately, we became acquainted and friends. Um, uh, because he's a, a, an exceptional human being and, uh, by the way, uh, an incredible uh, neuroscientist. Mm -hmm. So I will choose In Praise of Walking from um, Shenomara, from Professor Shenomara. Yeah. And uh, this book, In Praise of Walking, I think that if you, if you like nature and walking, uh, you will go down the rabbit hole on this book. It, it, oh it's, it's a book with several books inside. It's a wonderful mm. journey. Yeah, I have not read it yet, but I have heard it and it's on my to-be-read list. And my to-be-read list is getting very long very quickly with all these wonderful titles that are being thrown in my direction. Finally, a favorite movie or play that celebrates nature. All right. Well, uh, there is a movie, which again, I don't know if it was because I saw it in a very specific moment of my life. So it mm -hmm. goes back to you know one of your questions. It's a movie that touched me deeply by the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Absolutely magic. Uh, the photography, I mean, the, the visuals, it's incredible. And the message, especially the message in the end of the book. So I will pick up Into the Wild, which is kind of a classic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but similar to, uh, I, I honestly, I hesitate between two, two, but I choose this one and mainly for the last few minutes of the movie and this understanding and this consciousness, I think that whatever you are looking for in life in terms of happiness or mm. pleasure, but I think happiness here, it's really the word. Yeah. It cannot be shared. It will never be the true thing and real. Mm. And I think this is the point that, you know, you go on a journey on your own, which, by the way, the, the, you know, the story is about a person going on a journey, but he yeah. gets to a point where he understands, if I cannot be one with others, mm. if this cannot be shared. Mm. Does it make sense? Yeah. And I think that's probably one of the biggest lessons for our humanity. It's really to get to a point where you understand that this journey that people talk about, it's mostly not from point A to B, but actually the space in between. Wow. It's almost a pity that I'm not going to ask one last question. That was really good. That was really good. It was a pleasure. Yeah. And what a, I mean, I feel very, very honored when, you know, you, when I come across people like you and I tell you that I do this repeatedly, mm. every time I understand there is a, a human being doing wonderful things like you're doing, I immediately try by all means to get in contact yeah. because I do believe in the word actually, <laughs> I, I believe in the word competition, but not the way people use it mm. because I think we are all competing exactly for the same thing, mm. which is help this world. Yeah. And uh, it's never enough to bring together these people, never no. enough. I no. mean, we need more and more and more and yeah. more and hundreds of thousands and millions to a point that 
when you look at someone, actually, we feel so much more alike because we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the heart of things, we're not as different from one another as we like to think. There's way more in common than there is different. Way more. And more, more interesting as well. Yeah, exactly. So I got one final question. What is one thing that you can give the listeners that will help them step onto a trail of self-leadership while also reconnecting with nature ah. or staying connected to it? Well, uh, if I had to pick just one, I would pick this very simple exercise that has helped me tremendously. And maybe it's so simple that it's almost shocking. Mm. Um, when you are in a situation, any situation in life that challenges you, you might have a millisecond, probably it's not even one second, but you might have one millisecond mm -hmm. where you have conscious about what's happening. So my only advice is this one, pick up that millisecond and ask your question, how do I want to feed this thought? Mm -hmm. And it can make absolutely a revolution in your life because you can decide to feed it with more. So make it bigger, more intense. You can decide to feed it with less. Mm. And if this applies in a situation of conflict and you decided to feed it with less, you will have less conflict. Yes. And if this is a moment, a beautiful moment with another human being, and you decided to feed it with more, this moment will last forever, ever in your life. And if we can collect something out of this existence, is this, is this memories. And on that note, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Joao. Thank you so okay. much. I really enjoyed this. It was my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> You've been listening to Daring Self Leadership and the Nature Connection. You can find the show notes for this episode and every other one on the podcast page on the Dare Greatly Coaching website. The podcast is available wherever you like to listen and it's hosted by me, Gerdy Verwoerd. The music is Butt Bursting by Poddington Bear. Thank you for being with me today. I hope you'll join me again for the next episode. And in the meantime, as always, go there greatly.